I was born in South Korea and lived there until I was about 11 years old. And then I came to New York um, at age 11. And I've been in the New York area till about a year ago. And I think the, my gender became more prominent as I got a little bit older. I think I never really thought about it when I was learning the instrument for the first time and starting to perform at an early age. Uh, but when I started to really focus my career in the last uh, 10 years on more uh, maybe masculine piano concertos, which require larger hands, uh, maybe if you have a bigger body with um, more vertical power uh, going down to the keyboard, it would be uh, better to achieve that roaring fortissimo sound. When I started to play pieces like Rachmaninoff Third. I started to get questions like, um, uh, did, do you have difficulties playing that because you're a woman? And I had people uh, that, that were buying tickets because uh, they said, I saw a girl playing Rachmaninoff Third and I decided to come see the concert. And those comments actually kind of surprised me because uh, I never uh, saw myself having um, any problems because I was a smaller Asian woman. Uh, I, I started to think about that before going on stage backstage and uh, I had to have a little conversation with myself that I'm not a little Asian girl and I can do this. I have every uh, ability and I am capable of conquering this repertoire and it's part of this pep talk you have with all your insecure voices in your head backstage. I mean, it's really a part of it. But uh, I had to uh, go out with uh, no, no question in my mind that there's any shortcomings. So without ever talking about it, I guess I always just said there are no restrictions. I'm just going to learn every big repertoire there is. You know, there will be no uh, nothing in my way. And I mean, thankfully, I guess my hands are big enough that I can tackle those repertoire. And just as a personality, I do feel much more comfortable in that more extroverted repertoire. My love for Brahms and Schumann is, is always there, and that's what I return to over and over. But uh, of course, it can be uh, very masculine in in its own way, but I think there is a lot of moments where you almost say something and then you withdraw with uh, German rom romanticism, especially in Brahms. And it's just so against my personality because I am the kind to just blurt out before uh, everyone else and say exactly what I mean and probably say it 10 times more than I mean to. Uh, so it's just playing these repertoire that uh, requires extreme subtlety and extreme holding back has always been a challenge. So in a way, I guess um, I am also playing this extroverted repertoire uh, because it fits me better, because I feel like I can really go that extra mile and uh, there is something incredibly liberating about jumping off a cliff or uh, really racing up that, uh, to that uh, climax as fast as I can in the most effective fashion. And uh, so it's, I, can't, I can't say I learned it only to, to say I can conquer these very uh, difficult repertoire uh, built for a bigger person, uh, but I just uh, fell in love with it earlier uh, in my life. I think as a traveling soloist, every week I meet uh, new conductors, new collaborators, and you try to find your voice, but it's still a big question mark when you go into that first rehearsal because you don't actually know what it's going to sound like. And when you're in front of um, older, usually very established, uh, experienced uh, male conductor, uh, you, you want to learn something from them and you, there is a little bit of, you know, you revere their, their 
uh, status or uh, their experience really and the voices they carried throughout their career to to be who they are today it's uh, it's a little bit scary to go in as I don't know I was always a teenager or early 20s you know up and coming artists and I think there absolutely has to be a separation between the moments the rehearsal ends uh, where we go into our everyday life and that, that power uh, struggle between uh, the leader and the follower or the leader and the guests or uh, the homebody and the outsiders, uh, that, that kind of dynamic should not exist as soon as that rehearsal hour is over. During the rehearsal, we get that all the time. And I think in a way it's okay because uh, there is a way of everyone doing their work in different orchestras. I mean, every orchestra has a different dynamic and sometimes it's a, it's a tyrant of a maestro and sometimes the maestro is part of the orchestra's friends. And uh, as a young artist, actually going into uh, play with a very prominent orchestra, I won't say who, but I remember thinking the lower brass section was just completely overpowering me and there was uh, absolutely no way I could play any clearer or any more ener energetically to, to cut through their sound. And uh, I confided in someone in the industry and I heard that, I mean, of course you can ask the maestro to, to make the lower brass play a little bit softer, but you'll never be asked back to play with them again. So up to you. I ended up not saying anything and uh, yes there were some people that said there were balance issues and I wanted to say yes I know but it's not something I can fix from, uh, from where I am and of course if that were uh, a conductor that, uh, that I knew very well that I toured with and was a good friend of course, I would have said something, but this was a, a, a dynamic that we rarely had any conversation about anything. And I was at every given second so grateful to be a part of the process that I didn't want to do anything wrong. But let's say after the rehearsal, uh, this kind of scenario could happen um, outside of the working process. And that is absolutely completely inappropriate. And I think you have to draw the line the second, you know, the stage hands go, okay, break. This does not spill into even five minutes afterwards. And uh, the artist uh, that's an outsider should never feel uh, threatened or pressured to even uh, go have a drink or have dinner. Uh, with uh, anyone in the orchestra that you're uh, uncomfortable with. It's, uh, I think it's that initial step that's um, very hard to say no in the beginning. Um, I think once you start saying yes, it's uh, never ending. And it's uh, as soon as you feel that there is a, a negative tension between uh, different uh, people, uh, and you find yourself feeling a little bit uncomfortable, you have to catch yourself at that exact moment to do something about it. I remember when I played with a female conductor for the first time, that was a big surprise to me because maybe for the first hundred concerts of my life, it was a male conductor. And I remember that's the first thing I noticed and that's the first thing I talked about. And uh, I wish the next generation Never feel that. Whoever uh, that you have to collaborate with, gender is not the first thing that you see. If it's a female conductor, it should have e exactly the same uh, surprise factor as a male artist of all ages. And I think it's, it's just something that one should never notice. I hope it just melts over time and you don't, uh, you don't see that at all. It is about making music. It is about saying what you believe in. Um, doing your your art, your craft, um, and it's it's an extension of yourself. And um, I hope that uh, that everyone feels totally comfortable being themselves and never feel like they have to be someone they're not just because you're a new voice or you're an upcoming artist or you feel like you're just visiting them for one concert here and there. Every voice is important, and no one should ever shy away from who they are.
I started to play some Clara Schumann pieces and we play it next to Robert Schumann pieces. And musicians make speeches on how Clara Schumann's music is actually as good as Robert's and it should be noticed. And if she didn't have eight children and, uh, and a concertizing career playing her husband's music or Brahms music or whatever that was there available for her, that she would have become a better composer. And I, I think all of that, uh, to me, I think I was sitting there on stage thinking, why do we have to compare? And that's one thing that uh, I learned when I was very little. My aunt was my piano uh, teacher and I was her first student. And she made this uh, sign up on the wall that said, uh, never compare, never hurry, and never stop. Those were her three things and they still stay with me to this day. And never compare has always been a very significant one. In true artistry, you are just you. You're one. No one else sounds like you. No one else can sound like you. And to compare yourself to someone else is one thing, but compare yourself to someone else because of your gender, uh, to me, I think, should be something that should never happen. Thank you.